I found a spot on my couch that is just not comfortable to sit on. I don't think I can film here. video we are doing tips and advice for new POTS patients and in general things I wish I knew when I was first diagnosed with POTS. Although these tips are geared for people who are new to POTS, I do think that they are going to be good for pretty much anybody who has POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. My YouTube channel is very migraine focused but I've actually been a POTS patient for four years. I'm fresh enough to POTS that I still remember how bad those early days are and how every day basically sucks and you feel a little bit hopeless. But I'm also seasoned enough now in my walk with POTS that I know that I can give sound POTS advice and help you in your journey with POTS too. This video is just one of many about POTS on my channel, so after you watch this one, make sure you go check out my entire POTS playlist. Let's start with perhaps the most important piece of advice that I have. Tip number one, community. Reach out so that you know that you're not alone in this. For most people, that POTS diagnosis is the day that you heard of POTS. Most people have never heard of postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, including most doctors. So it can be really disheartening when you're first diagnosed because nobody has heard of it, you have never heard of it, and nobody knows how to treat it. But know that there is a bustling online community of other POTS patients who are ready to help you out. I'm only one of many. If you join Facebook communities, you can connect with other POTS patients, get advice and tips about POTS from them, and just get hugs of solidarity. They can also suggest books about your illness or maybe websites that are really good resources. And some groups are even location specific, so you can meet up with other POTS people in your area or you can get advice on doctors who do a really good job in your area. Sometimes it can be really hard to find a doctor who understands POTS. But no matter what, no matter how discouraged you might ever feel, know that you're not alone in this. And I have another video on my channel that I recommend that is along these lines and it's called The Stool of Happiness. I think the title is something like How to Stay Positive with Migraine or How to Stay Positive with Chronic Migraine. And that talks about how you can fill your social cup without draining too much of your energy because I know that when you have chronic illness it can be really difficult to find time for yourself and find ways to do self-care when you have such limited time and such limited energy. That video is specifically for people who are sick. Let's go to tip number two. Focus on the cans. Focus on the things that you can do. POTS has a way of disabling you in a way that's just different from anything else I've ever experienced. It's really weird because even though my brain feels on when I'm sitting down, when I'm laying down, everything seems like it's totally fine. It's like the second I stand up, my brain is jello, my heart is going crazy like I'm jogging, I can't stop eating, I'm sometimes a little bit nauseous, and in a way it kind of mimics a panic attack. Check out my video POTS vs Anxiety for more about that. So in a world where that suddenly became my new normal, I found myself constantly telling myself like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that anymore. I can't stand at the concert. I can't go shopping with my friends. I can't whatever else I can't do. But instead of focusing on what you can't do, you have to focus on what you can do or how you can do those things that you think that you can't do. So for example, how can I enjoy myself at the concert rather than I can't stand at the concert or how can I enjoy shopping with my friends again, rather than I can't shop with my friends again? Sometimes the answer is not that easy to come by, but sometimes the answer is as easy as buying yourself a walker, which is what happened to me last week. I finally got myself a walker, and then I was able to enjoy going shopping with my friends again. And I even brought my babies to a museum, which I never would have done before. But my walker made it possible because it has a seat. That was thanks to my positive mindset and me wanting to know how I could do the things that I wanted to do. So don't let POTS hold you back. With every single tip, I'm like, wow, that's the best one. These are so good. Number three, know your triggers. Know your POTS triggers. I know that in the beginning, it can seem like it's all the time and nothing is making a difference no matter what you change or what you do. But trust me, you need to try something, stick to it for a few weeks, stick to it for a few months or whatever your doctor recommends, and see if that does help you mitigate your symptoms. There are some things that commonly worsen POTS, and these are things I wish I knew about when I was just diagnosed with POTS. So new POTS patients, listen up. Things like standing up too fast will worsen your POTS. Heat tends to be a trigger for a lot of patients. Putting your hands up in the air, up over your head, may also worsen your symptoms. 
There's also certain foods for some people. For me, if I have a lot of salt at once and not enough water to go with it, then that will worsen my pots a lot. In fact, outside of standing upright, that's one of my worst fainting triggers, is huge salt bombs. Dehydration in general is not good if you have pots. And along the lines of those salt bombs, what I meant by that is sodium bombs. Table salt, if all I eat is table salt. What I really need to do is mix in other electrolytes, things like potassium, things like magnesium. Check out my How I Take Magnesium video. And in addition, just a variety of tons of foods and other herbs, fruits and vegetables and meats. Making sure that I keep my blood sugar balanced, as well as keeping my salt and electrolytes and my water intake high, really makes a huge difference for my pots, as well as compression socks. Let's go to the next one. But first, a shameless plug. If you are finding this helpful, guys, please like, comment, and share. It really does help my channel. I'm actually not allowed to share my own videos because I'm monetized. So in most groups, it's considered self-promotion if I post my own video, even if I feel like it's really gonna help the people in that group. So I really rely on you guys sharing, and I really appreciate it when you do. It is the highest compliment. Next tip. We're gonna go back to talking about my walker. Accommodations. Accommodate yourself and own it. It took me a long time to be okay with the fact that I was disabled. For a long time, I just didn't want to look disabled when I was out in public. But eventually I got the service dog and I realized how empowering it was to have the freedom that I was missing so much. So if you need accommodations, own it. You can always buy it on Amazon, try it. If you don't like it, return it. So here are a few accommodations that I think make a huge difference for any POTS patients. And I highly recommend you try them out if you think they may make a difference in your life. A shower chair. Ask any POTS patient how they feel about their shower chair. We all love our shower chairs. I also have a bathroom seat for things like powdering, brushing my teeth and flossing, brushing my hair. Very important. And I have a place set up where I can sit down to put on my makeup so that I don't feel rushed. For a while, I was carrying around a little tripod stool that allowed me to sit down anytime I was in line. It was meant to be a lightweight backpacking camping chair. It was like under a pound, only this tall, and fold it out to make a little tiny triangular seat. The reasoning behind that was because I found that oftentimes when I was walking around the store and then I suddenly stopped to wait in line, that was oftentimes when I started to feel very lightheaded. As I mentioned earlier in this video, now I have a walker. It has four wheels and a seat, and I wish I had gotten one sooner. It's not something I ever considered because it just looks so geriatric. I'm way not old enough for a walker, but it has honestly been one of the most freeing things that I have done for my pots. Maybe outside of getting a service dog. And finally, tip number five. Tip number five for any new pots patient or any pots patient who is frankly at their wits end, be patient. Be patient with yourself and be patient with your doctors. Be patient with your treatment plan because it can take a very long time. Be patient with medications and their side effects and how sometimes they can make it worse instead of better. Be patient with your body while it learns to adjust to those new side effects. Forgive yourself for coming down with this because it's absolutely not your fault that you're sick. And if a doctor tells you that POTS isn't real, fire that doctor and move on to a different one. This condition, as well as chronic migraine, have caused a lot of FOMO for me in my life. I've missed out on a lot of social things, a lot of career things, a lot of parenting and relationship things, a lot of dates, trips, adventures and activities, but I've gained a lot too. I've had a lot of plans and dreams that are gone and a lot of relationships that have changed. But just know that it does get better. I'm four years into it and POTS does not control my life anymore. There are definitely good days and there are bad days. There are confounding factors and things that are causing my POTS. I have underlying things that are causing this syndrome, but all in all, it has become manageable. So whether you're new to POTS or you have had POTS for a little while, just know that it does get better. It's really hard at the beginning and it really sucks. It sucks in the long run, but you'll figure out how to manage it. I might have lied. This actually might be the most important thing when it comes to being diagnosed with POTS because POTS is the kind of thing where it is lifelong, there is no cure, and you just manage your symptoms the best that you can. But for a lot of POTS patients, there's actually something underlying and that thing might actually have a cure. So that is a really big deal. 
I'm not going to get into that kind of stuff in this video, but please poke around at my channel and at my POTS playlist if you want to learn more about that. Don't lose hope, and don't forget to continue to reach out to one another. Love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.